your theory of if we're in a simulation, there's post-humans who are really technologically advanced and they're creating our world, which you call an ancestral, an ancestor civilization, correct? What would, why would they do that? Like, what would be the reason of them creating um, a civilization like ours? Yeah, so we can um, only speculate. I mean, we don't know much about posthuman psychology or their motives, <laughs> but I mean, there are several potential reasons, motivations. Um, you could ask why it is that we humans, with our current, the more limited technology, create computer simulations, and we do it for a variety of purposes. Um, people have, you know, for, for, for thousands of years, tried to create imaginary worlds that people can experience, would be the theater, right, or literature, and, and more recently through virtual reality and computer games. Um, this can be for entertainment or for cultural purposes. You also have scientists from creating computer simulations to... Uh, to study various uh, systems that might be hard to reach in nature, but you can sort of create a little computer simulation of them and then you study how the simulation behaves. Um, so there could be uh, entertainment reasons, there could be scientific reasons. You know, maybe for these posthumans, they might be interested in knowing what, if, if they ever ran into alien civilizations, what those would be like. And maybe one way to study that is to simulate many different originations of higher technological civilizations, like starting from something like current human civilization or before and sort of running the tape forward and seeing what the distribution is of different kinds of superintelligences you would get from that. Mm. Um, and, and you could also imagine other, other, you could imagine like historical tourism, if they, can, they can't, can't literally travel back in time, but what the second best might be is to create sort of uh, replicas of historical environments that future people could sort of experience almost as if they were going back in time, but living in a sort of temporarily exploring a simulated reality. Um, you could imagine other sort of moral or religious reasons as well um, of different kinds. Hmm. If it's true that we're living in a simulation, what do you feel like are the moral implications of what it means for our lives? Uh, that's difficult. Um, I think to a, a first initial approximation, I would say if you are in a simulation, do the same things you would if you knew you were not in a simulation. Um, because the best guide to what would happen next in the simulation and how your actions would impact things might still be the normal methods we use. Uh, like you look at patterns uh, and extrapolate those. Um, and so whether we're simulated or not, unless you have some direct insight into what the simulator's motives are or like the mm -hmm. precise way in which this simulation was set up, you just have to sort of look at what kind of simulation this appears to be and what seems to, you know, if you do A, you know, B follows. If if you want to get into your car, you have to take out your car keys. If you want to do this, so so I think that would be um, to a first cut the answer. Um, but then, to the extent that you think you have some maybe probabilistic guesses about how these things are configured, that might give you sort of on the margin more reason to emphasize some uh, hypothesis that otherwise would be less. Plausible. So, for example, if we are not in a simulation and uh, you have a secular materialistic outlook on life, then um, when, when we die, we die and that's it, right? Uh, we're in a simulation, it, you could potentially uh, be moved into a different simulation or uplifted to the level of the simulators. These, these would at least be on the table as possibilities. Hmm. Um, similarly, if we are in basement physical reality, as far as we know, current physical theories say the world can't just suddenly pop out of existence. Like there are conservation of energy, conservation of momentum and other physical laws that prevent that from happening. If, however, our world is simulated, then, you know, if, in theory, if, if the simulators flick the power off, the, our world would pop like a bubble disappearing into nothingness. Hmm. Um, Broadly speaking, I think there would be a wider range of possibilities on the table if we are assimilated than if we are not. Um, so it might mean approaching 
our existence with less confidence that we have it basically figured out and uh, thinking there might be more things um, on heaven and uh, on earth than, than, than we sort of normally assume in our mm. common sense philosophy and then maybe a, some sort of attitude of humility um, would yeah. be appropriate in that context. It's so interesting. Is there any sort of like clues or pieces of proof that prove we're in a simulation? Like, for example, like the dinosaurs and how they just like went extinct and then, you know, it's kind of like a new world after that. Do you feel like there's any clues to that we're in a sim simulation? I'm rather skeptical of that. I get a lot of random people emailing saying they've discovered some glitch in the matrix or mm. something, you know, somebody was like looking at their bathroom mirror and thought they saw pixels or like other. But I think the thing though is that um, whether we are in a simulation or not, you would still expect some people to report those kinds of observations for all the normal types of psychological reasons. So like some people might hallucinate something, some might be misremembering something or misinterpreting something or making something up or like these things you would expect to have take place anyway. So I think whether we are in a simulation or not, the best, most likely explanation for those reports are these ordinary psychological phenomena rather than that there is actually some defect in the simulation that they have been able to detect. I think... Um, to create a simulation like this in the first place would be very hard and simulators advanced enough to do that would probably also have the ability to patch things up so that the creatures inside the simulation couldn't notice. And if they did notice, they could sort mm -hmm. of edit that out or rerun it from an earlier save point or, you know, edit the memory or do other mm -hmm. things like that. So I'm, I, don't, I don't think that. I, th I think that there are indirect observations that might slightly adjust the probability. So if you, if, you, if you recall the original simulation argument with these three possibilities, right? The simulation argument shows at least one of them is true, but doesn't tell us which one. But what that means is that to the extent we get evidence against the first two possibilities, it would tend to shift probability mass over to the remaining third, and conversely. So if you think we can get evidence for or against say the first one, which is that almost all civilizations at our current stage of technological development go extinct before reaching technological maturity, then that would tend to indirectly affect the probability of the simulation hypothesis. So in particular, the closer we get ourselves to being able to wield this technology, you know, the less likely it is that almost all civilizations at our stage fail to go the remaining few steps. And so that, that will tend to you know, move probability over to the remaining possibilities. So basically what you're saying is if we can in ourselves, like as technology advances, start to create simulations, that that means that we're probably in a simulation ourselves. Yeah, and in particular, if, if we uh, yeah, get both the ability and we still at that point retain the interest in, in doing that, that, that would sort of really, really leave only the third possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but short of getting all the way there, if we get sort of half the way there, like it still you know, removes some of the places where this great filter could be. Yeah. Like the closer we get, the less chance there is that the remaining few steps will be impossible to to take. Do you feel like AI is going to help us um, get closer to creating this simulation? And now that AI is something that we use all the time, do you think it will help discover that we're in a simulation? Well, I mean, for the same reasons, we might uh, be able to figure these things out. If, if, if indeed the argument is sound, then I guess other uh, powerful minds would also reach that same conclusion. And they might also reach the conclusion that they are uh, in a simulation. For them, it might, especially for sort of early stage AIs, uh, be a very salient possibility. Because already, right now, uh, when training our AIs, we often put them in simulations. Mm. That's like a big part of the training and right? we carry these like virtual game environments or something and they and so for them it seems like a very obvious hypothesis to consider once they develop some degree of situational awareness. And you already see glimmers of that with current AI systems. And in fact, I think this might be an important shaper of AI behavior as they become uh, sophisticated about reasoning strategically about the context. They would certainly be shaped by considerations that they might well be living 
currently in a simulation environment rather than in deployment. If we are, in fact, living in a simulation, and let's say we discover for certain we're in a simulation, we can create simulations, what do you think would happen on Earth? Like, how do you think things would change? From the discovery itself or from other things that might... Like, uh, for example, like, that? like, will we care about recycling anymore? <laughs> will we care about, like, things like that anymore? Yeah, well, I think humans have a great ability to adapt to uh, changes in worldview. And for the most part, most people are, are only slightly affected by these big picture considerations, I think. I mean, you can look through human history, different worldviews have come and gone. And some people become very fanatical and take it seriously. Most people just, broadly speaking, get on with their lives. You know, maybe once in a while they get asked about these things and they say certain words rather than other words, but mm. by and large. So I think sort of the direct philosophical implications on our behavior would be moderate probably, but um, I imagine in this in this situation where we developed the technology, say, to create our own simulations, the technology that allowed us to do that would also allow us to do so many other things to reshape our world. And those, mm -hmm. those more direct technological impacts, I think, uh, would be far greater than the sort of indirect impacts by changing our philosophical opinions about the world. Mm. Well, do you think that people would become more violent? Why would that be the case? I guess because if, if you're living in a s simulation, maybe uh, um, people wouldn't consider death to be the same thing anymore. Yeah, so you could imagine, if we, if we find out we were in a very particular kind of simulation, like some sort of short duration game simulation, uh, then yeah, you could imagine that that would shape, just as you maybe behave very differently in, in when you're playing a computer game, hopefully, like... You don't behave the same way in, in real life as you do mm -hmm. when you're playing a first-person shooter. Uh, so, so that could be. But if, if, we, if we didn't get any new insights as to how the, this particular simulation is configured, we just learned that it is a simulation, but not anything about the sort of specific character of the simulation, then the, uh, I don't know whether that would lead to a greater propensity for violence. If, if anything, maybe uh, the, the converse, you think that might be uh, um, a, a stages after the simulation where your behavior in the simulation would affect how, like kind of similar to traditional ideas yeah. of karma or an afterlife. Mm -hmm. like they, you know, some, some people might become more violent or, 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 or fanatical, but uh, it can also serve as a sort of moral ballast or like a kind of, well, there is... Hopefully you do the right thing just because it's moral, but if not, you know, if there are, is like some, some system of accountability that might also in, induce other people to, to pay more attention to making sure you, you don't harm others or trample on other people's rights and interests.